In calculus, trigonometry comes up all the time. There's not a whole lot that you need from trig. In particular, all you need are the basic functions, sine, cosine, and tangent. If you know those, what they mean, and some relative identities of sine and cosine, then you're pretty much golden. So we'll go through everything that you need to know about trig for calculus. Consider a right triangle whose angles are A, B, and C. Sine of angle A is defined as the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Cosine of angle A is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And tangent of angle A is sine over cosine, which is opposite over hypotenuse divided by adjacent over hypotenuse, which turns out to be opposite over adjacent. The trig identities are just ratios of a right triangle. Now, if you were to create a unit circle whose length was 1 here, cosine of theta would be defined as the horizontal axis, the horizontal length of every single uh, length of the triangle, and sine of theta would be the vertical length of your triangles on this circle. So for example here we have some angle theta and we have a radius which is 1 going to the edge of our unit circle. Cosine of angle theta is the horizontal length of this triangle, basically the base. And sine of theta is essentially the height of this triangle. Which means that cosine of theta is 1 right here. This is theta equals 0. It's negative 1 over here at theta equals pi. And it's 1 again over here at theta equals 2 pi. Likewise, sine of theta is equal to 1 up here at pi over 2 and it's negative 1 down here at 3 pi over 2. And so you can imagine that this length, this radius, goes all the way across and every single value of cosine, the base of this triangle, and sine, the height of this triangle, gets attributed to every single theta value. In particular, consider the following. Here is the graph of sine of x. Now x is your angle of the unit circle. You can see here that when x is equal to pi over 2, right here, sine is 1. When x is equal to 3 pi over 2, sine is negative 1. At 0 pi and 2 pi, there is no height for this triangle, and so sine is 0, 0, and zero. And if you look at the length of your red line throughout this circle as it goes around, that is the y value that is attributed to the sine of that particular angle, theta. So this is how our sine function is created. And cosine starts off at 1 up here and then just is off by pi over 2. Now, there's one more thing that you need to know. There are some values of sine and cosine that you have to memorize for calculus. In particular, 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, and pi over 2. Sine of 0 is 0, sine of pi over 6 is 1 half, sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2, and sine of pi over 2 is 1. Likewise, cosine of 0 is 1. Cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. Cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. And cosine of 1 half, or cosine of pi over 3, is 1 half. Cosine of pi over 2, 0. Tangent, you don't even have to memorize, because that's just sine over cosine. 0 over 1, 0.
one half divided by root three over two is root three over three. Root two over two divided by root two over two is one. Root three over two divided by one half is root three. And one divided by zero is undefined because you can't divide by zero. Likewise, cosecant and secant, well, cosecant is defined as one over sine. Secant is defined as one over cosine. So if you memorize sine and cosine of these angles right here, then you'll have tangent by dividing them. You'll have cosecant and secant by doing one over. You'll also have cotangent by doing cosine over sine. Cotangent is defined as one over tangent. So that would be cosine over sine. And here's everything that you have to know about basic trig. You have to know what the graphs look like. You have to know these particular angles of sine and cosine, and therefore, those particular angles of tan, cosecant, secant, and cotangent, which you can easily get just from these.